Today I have an unboxing of a product that holds a special place in my heart. This is my personal favorite water cooling pump. This is the SwiftTech MCP655. So what makes it my favorite water cooling pump? Well, a couple of different things. First of all, in my experience, both as a, an end user of this product and as a reseller of this product, it is phenomenally reliable. These pumps almost never die. They come with a one year warranty, but I can tell you with a fair amount of confidence, you pretty much won't need it. Number two, the performance is awesome. This is one of the best performing pumps on the market. Yes, you might be looking at, you know, this pump with sort of this aftermarket adder that on paper outperforms it. But the reality of it is, once you have a good high performance pump, that's pushing water through the blocks, you're talking about maybe a half a degree tops of performance difference between this and something else that, that outperforms it in a synthetic test. So I really do love this particular product and I do use one. In fact, my MCP655 is a few years old and still going strong in my personal water-cooled machine. So what does SwiftTech have to say for themselves here? Ultra quiet, okay, fair enough, I buy that. No maintenance, compact design, and adjustable speed, extreme performance, reliability of five years mean time between failure. Yeah, I buy that for sure. Quick and easy installation, which is also true. And yeah, that pretty much summarizes it, doesn't it? Here's a little diagram of what the pump looks like on the inside, although you pretty much shouldn't need to uh, disassemble it for any, for any reason, okay? Packing list, oh, it uses universal four pin Molex, which is great, so you can plug it into your system no matter what. Pump speed is adjustable from 4,800 RPM down to 1,800 RPM. Now this is key. This is the most silent pump out there on the market that I would consider reliable. There have been other silent pumps, but this one is the one that won't fail you, and there's no nonsense, you're just turning down a very reliable, very high performance pump to a lower speed. Here we go, operating voltage range, 12 volts. Yep, that's good, plugs into a Molex. Here are all of the technical specifications, which personally I'm not gonna worry too much about, because what it comes down to is it's silent, it performs great, and it looks a little something like this. This is, I actually can't stress enough the silence. There's two versions of this pump. There's the MCP655 and the MCP655B, which stands for basic. Now the basic version does not come with the adjustable uh, RPM. To me, that makes that pump not nearly as attractive an option because I basically just take this, I turn it all the way down to one, and it is dead silent. Now I've tried, I've tried testing this. Uh, my loop has a CPU block, a GPU block, radiator reservoir, and this pump. And I go, okay, I'm gonna turn it all the way up to five, I'm gonna turn it all the way down to one. How much of a temperature difference is there? Nada. It's not measured by the thermal probe on my CPU, which means it's probably somewhere in the 0.5 to one degree range, like within that margin of error. It's much more silent and it's also a very convenient feature because when you're first filling your loop, in order to get air bubbles out, it can be very useful to turn it all the way down to the bottom, then crank it up to the top, then turn it all the way down to the bottom. What that can do is it will alter the flow of the water through your loop in order to dislodge air bubbles that might be trapped in your CPU block or your uh, radiator. So that's gonna mean that that annoying sound of, of air being sucked through the pump that makes like a yeah, that kind of noise can be eliminated much faster with a new build if you have a pump that has variable speed like this one. Accessory wise, it comes with a double-sided sticky mounting pad. Looks a little something like that. You got some noise isolation, vibration isolation, dampening foam in between, and then two stickers on either side, so you can stick it down. You can also screw it down. That's what these holes here are for. Okay, so it comes with screws, as well as in a little instruction manual. Now, how does the pump work? Nice, long Molex connector. Recommend sleeving that if you're gonna run it anywhere, like far, because it's kinda ugly, but that's okay. Okay, Molex connector on the end. And then you've got your inlet and your outlet. So this is the inlet for the pump that goes right into, I hope you can see in there. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see. Can you see? Okay, well, it goes into the pump one way or another. And then it spins inside, and then pumps the water out the top. So a couple things when you're installing a pump that are very important. Number one, you always want your pump to be lower 
because gravity works, then your reservoir. So the reservoir water will feed into the pump without any effort. You also want to make sure there's no restriction around the inlet of the pump. So if you have a really tight U-bend right before the inlet, that's bad. If you wanted to limit the flow rate of your pump by using tight curves in the tubing or whatever the case may be, you should limit it at the outlet rather than at the inlet. The inlet should be as restriction free as possible from the reservoir, okay? And that's pretty much it in terms of importance. Oh, another one. Never let your pump run dry, ever. Never let it run with no water coming into it. That's very, very bad. Never take a pump and just, you know, oh, uh, you know, I don't have my other water cooling components, but I want to find out if it works and plug it in. Bad, 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 bad. You will destroy your pump, guarantee. Okay. Next, this pump includes half inch fittings. So you can see these are half inch uh, barbs and they are not removable. So what that means is in my case, when I want to use 3 8 inch tubing, I have to dip it in boiling water and then stretch it over the fittings in order to make it fit. Now there are aftermarket pumps for the D5, although I see no particular reason to use them because once you stretch a smaller tubing like a 7 16 or a 3 8 inch tubing over it, it will never ever leak. I will personally guarantee that if you get it all the way over to the end. So thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the MCP 655. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.